Welcome to the webinar, everybody. We'll be starting in uh, about one minute. Uh, great to see so many people logging in. Hi there, Chris. How are you? Where are you calling from today? Singapore. Okay, nice. You got better weather than us then. <laughs> I wonder what the time is over there. Except it's midnight, right? Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> be late. Extra big thanks for joining us. That's uh, that's great. Uh, we've got a bunch more people checking in here from all over the world, and we'll kick off uh, shortly. Just give uh, a little bit of time for to join us. Um, you can also see there's some polls there if you'd like to just answer a couple of questions in the meantime. If you click on polls, you should be able to, to answer a couple of those questions. So welcome to today's webinar with Pickett. We'll be kicking off in just a minute or so. Today's topic is the business impact of bad presentations and how to stop it with Rob DeSell. Okay, no polls yet, says Kathleen. Okay, well, let's see if we can get those going. Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll just do those in the chat. Um, great. So it's uh, time now. So we're going to kick things off, and maybe a couple more people will join. Um, it's good to see good turnout. Uh, we like to keep these, um, you know, manageable, so we can interact with you a little bit on the chat. So uh, we'll be asking a few questions there, and also saving some time at the end for questions. But. Uh, just like to say a big welcome to everybody. Uh, today's webinar is the business impact of bad presentations and how to stop it. Uh, my name is Brad Hawks and I'm content manager at uh, Pickett and uh, work with the marketing department. But I also have a background in presenting. I've done uh, hundreds of talks all over Europe over the last 10, 15 years. And along with everybody at Pickett, I'm just passionate about trying to help people to communicate clearly, get their message across in the best possible way and uh, and be effective when they present. Because what I've found is a lot of times uh, people do have the information, they have the experience, they have the ideas, they have the pitch, but it's just the packaging and the presentation that can be a challenge. And that's why we get terms like death by PowerPoint and people that associate, you know, PowerPoint with, uh, you know, falling asleep or, or uh, being distracted. But in fact, we, we think PowerPoint is perhaps the one of the best productivity and communication tools out there. Um, there's actually 1.2 million Office users around the world, which means a whole lot of potential uh, PowerPoints. So, um, yeah, so uh, just to make sure that the chat's working um, before we hand over to Rob, uh, just a couple of questions um, so we can get to know you a bit too. The first one is uh, how many of you have created a uh, a PowerPoint at work in the last month. So if you could just write yes or no in the chat, how many have created a PowerPoint at work in the last month? Genevieve says yes, Chris says yes, Kathleen says yes. That's three out of three so far. Chris has done it too, so has Alana. Okay, so everybody so far. Olivia, yeah, okay. I haven't got any no's yet, so it looks like you're in the right place. <laughs> uh, one more question just before we kick off. Um, how many of you have had some sort of PowerPoint or presentation training at your current job? So whether that be, you know, public speaking skills or whether it be, um, you know, creating nice looking slides or finding good images or, okay, so there's a few yes, a few nuns. Um, quite a few though have had some. Alana hasn't, Kathleen hasn't. Okay, so hopefully we can give you a little bit today. Uh, we're really lucky to have Rob DeSell with us. He's part of the team now at Pickett, but has a background in uh, advertising, worked for one of the leading uh, ad agencies in Stockholm with clients like H&M, Volvo, uh, Ikea, and other global brands. And uh, he's going to be just walking us through some ways to create more effective, impactful presentations. And uh, towards the end, I'll also give you a free... Um, 
code for, for getting a discount if you want to use Picket later on. Also, a short demo. I'm going to try and create a stunning presentation in under four minutes. Um, and we'll also give you some time for, for some questions uh, in about 20 minutes from now. So, But uh, if you've got questions in the meantime, just put them in the chat, and I'll try to pick up on those at the end. Uh, and now I'll hand over to you, Rob. Thanks. All right. Hi, everyone. Good to see so many uh, joined this webinar. And uh, it's a topic that is um, really exciting for, for all of us at Picket. So um, let's hope that we can meet your expectations. Now, um, let's see if I can share my deck. And uh, here we go. Here we go. Can you see my screen? I can. All right, good. So uh, today we're going to talk about the business impact of bad presentations and, of course, how to stop it. And um, thank you, Brad, for that intro. I'm going to give you a, a little bit of background from, from my side on top of what Brad already said um, to, to give kind of a, a little bit of context into why I'm talking about this. So um, my background is, I, I, you know, long story short, I got a master's degree in media communication from university. I had various jobs and uh, in communication that led me finally into become head of strategy at Acne Art and Industry. It's a big agency in Scandinavia, also with a fashion brand. And um, now, uh, since two or three years, become CMO and head of marketing at, at uh, Picket, uh, working with presentations. So why why is this relevant to this um, topic? Well, at Acne, I was probably making about two more crucial business presentations every week and it was everything from you know making uh, uh something in the taxi because everything changed one hour before the meeting and you had to redo all of it to uh months months of preparation for a 30 minute slot at a, a meeting in germany you just fly in and the meeting itself maybe was worth a million dollar so everything in between and i want to you know some of the key learnings from that uh, and some of the things that we at uh, Picket, uh, the whole team, we want to share with you today. And just to get the level of your presentation uh, raised so you can become a better um, presenter, that is. And one of the key roles I have, I mean, I was working with strategy, but I think really uh, I was the trust guy. I was creating trust. So one of the formulas that we found uh, at the agency when we pitched that Trust and excitement works hand in hand. So my role was basically to provide the customer with enough insight, strategy, and thinking, and and you know, and trust for us as as people in the room, so they would buy into the excitement of the creative work uh, of those people. I still think that that formula could hold for a lot more things than just uh, selling creative work, but uh, I let your destiny to decide that anyway so at picket what is picket i mean picket is a all-in-one uh image platform and um we have a seamless integration into powerpoint it works both for companies as a whole and for individuals making presentations or other documents and the reason we're making this webinar is because we see a lot of potential in people that go to waste for reasons that can be addressed or avoided we also think Picket can help address some of these issues, and we will show how to become a better presenter and save you time using Picket, but we'll do that in the uh, end of the webinar. So let's set the scene here. Um, this is a normal day in the world. About 35 million plus PowerPoints are made. I think, to be honest, that number is probably around 150, but we haven't managed to get that confirmed. About half of all PowerPoints are made using a corporate template. And most typically, the audience is your colleagues. And that's because most people, about half the people, works in companies that has 500 plus employees. And we asked before here in the poll how many PowerPoints, or if you made a PowerPoint in the last month. And actually, the, the most typical knowledge worker would make one or more PowerPoints in a week. So I think the, the average there was as pretty close to that. And what the presenter is trying to do is get the point across, of course. And in what way? Well, they try to either inform 
or persuade. They try to inspire or to educate. Of course, this is sometimes mixed and, and it is very generalized. But what we found in our studies is these are kind of the overall approaches from the user personas. And um, one common problem that is occurring is that people tend to use PowerPoint for a lot of things. So they compromise, they use, uh, they make a deck and then they also treat it as a leave behind or an email send out for people who didn't attend the meeting. And then that means that they include a lot of text because there will be no spoken voice to it. Um, that is a compromise that I used to think that you should be aware of and consider whether you want to make a text document, a PowerPoint, or a visual design app. I know also some people who are not designers, they use PowerPoint to, to make flow charts and, and other designs. So just make sure that you, know, um, you don't create a compromised document. And by the way, I don't know if you feel nervous making presentations. I know I do sometimes still, but actually you could be in good company. Did you know that 90% feel very nervous making the presentation and 47 about slightly nervous and only 11% feel excited. So if you're on the nervous side, you're in good company, but maybe this shouldn't come as a surprise. I mean, knowledge workers are highly educated highly skilled and they are trained to solve problems in their field but almost none of them receive proper training in how to deliver their message in a story in a graphical compelling style using images to support the message this is simply taken for granted that they would know these things so let's put it into another context a typical meeting so our presenter is about to report an update here in an ongoing project. The audience is involved, involved, his colleagues, maybe his or her manager and someone from another department interested in the progress. Now the audience, all they want to hear is, I understand what he or she is doing. I understand how the person adds value. I want to learn something. I want to understand enough so we can come to a decision or I want to reassure ourselves that we are under control. But the presenter ambition a lot of times is I don't want to look stupid, you know, and I want to make it appear like I worked really hard to be ambitious. Uh, I want to show data so I cover my back in case I get questions that I can't answer. And once they see what I see, they will be persuaded and sometimes to wow them. So you can see there's a, there's a bit of a conflict here in what people expect from that meeting and what they're trying to achieve. And this is really uh, the perfect storm. So you have the rational speaker that meets the emotional audience. And if that's not enough, the audience is also skipping about 80% of your text if you're adding too much. And research actually shows that people will only remember about 10% of your message of the three days, unless you use some kind of graphical visual aid or pair it with an image, then if you do that, you, they will retain 65% of the information of the three days. But this is not always easy, is it? Because there might be another part playing here uh, that if you're in a big company, that could be the brand department asking you to only use the company assets, the co company template, company logos, and so on. But this is actually death by PowerPoint defined. It is failing to take the leap from your data and information, the findings, and make that into a story that put the findings into context. That is to create meaning for your audience. And to push it even further, it means that you're asking the audience to do the job for you. Because if you're a skilled person, isn't it you who should be putting your findings into context? The average employee spends about 20 hours per month making presentations. And we think that time could be better spent or improved. And still the audience feel that 73% of all presentations don't meet expectations. And like Brad said before, um, about a third report to actually doze off sometimes watching someone else. So put this into simple terms. I th we think that companies who do not facilitate skills or tools for the most important assets, which is are you, the, the highly skilled um, 
uh, employees, they are bleeding in efficiency. It means a lot of unfulfilled potential, and it means that work does not make sense to others when they fail to share it. So we understand that there, it's, a, it's a business impact and that we can improve, but okay, so how do you do that? So here's, here's a bit of, from our approach. And I understand that, you know, for your Tuesday presentation update with the teammates, it might be, you know, you feel like we're overdoing it. But let's go through the steps. And I think it doesn't have to take a lot of time. Uh, just asking yourself a couple of questions before you dig into drafting up the slides will put your mind in the right position and it will show in the end result for sure. So we're gonna go through four steps and one is significance. So significant means that you need to decide a purpose of the presentations. A lot of times when people don't ask themselves um, this question, they actually fill in the first one alternative here, which is, well, because I have to. And sometimes it's just to pass the information. It's not very engaging. And obviously the information will not be passed because you don't motivate the audience. So of course you want the last one, which is to create meaning. And to create meaning, it sounds kind of profound sometimes, but just make a sentence or two and, and put it on slide one on your deck and you keep it there until the deck is done and then you delete it. So it could be something like make the audience see the value of my idea or make my colleagues understand this risk in a bigger picture. Then two, the audience. This is also a step that people often skip. They, they take for granted that they have a sense of what the audience will, will expect. But writing it out makes you actually think of it in a different way. So. What is the expected return for the time that they give you? Because that is what they're doing. They're giving you time to do the presentation. Is it to learn something? Is it to be inspired, entertained, or reassured? Well, um, this could be also something simple and also put this on slide one as well until the deck is done. The audience, oh, this is an example. The audience think that they will learn something new that they can use to leverage their precision. Okay, good. So you know that and don't make the, the value 10 bullet points, you know, make it something. And even if you talk for four to five minutes, there will only be one or two key takeaways from that. Now two, when you have that, you have created significance, you get the structure. So first, just address the problem that we talked about before. Don't make a compromise. Is it a, a Word document? Is it a PowerPoint? Is it a design document? And after that, design decide which template you're going to use. Are you going to use a corporate or company template? Or you want to use a free template from, from Office or other sources? So you just make a decision on that. And then you get into the overall story. Now, with the overall story, it's just to, you know, this is from end to end and create chapters and milestones along the way. We like to think of it in three acts. And this is a, a well-established uh, storyline structure. And if you want to dig into this topic, because we could talk about this for hours, it's the same concept used for Hollywood movies, um, you know, award-winning literature, any story basically that you find intriguing is normally divided into these three acts. So act one is about setting the scene, putting everything into context, how it usually works and connect with the audience. Then when they're connected, you introduce an obstacle, the turning point number one, um, usually the problem. And you kind of delve into the problem and you attack it from different perspectives. You make it more profound, more deeper and deeper and deeper until the audience gets to the point of no return. They feel like, okay, this cannot go on. You know, there's, even if I ignore this presentation, uh, things will not be the same with the no knowledge that I have now. So after that, you can introduce the turning point number two, which basically is your solution and, and you know, the climax of the story. I understand that not much, you know, it's, it's one thing to be a Hollywood script writer and, and something else to make a PowerPoint for, for the Wednesday presentation. But just try to think of it really like swift in these sections 
and it will improve in a way that the audience can feel and you can feel it and once you get some practice into it. And then when you have that and, and make the chapters, the milestones, then you start write the storyline in between. Then we get to number three, so simplicity. The reason why you need to keep it simple is because people don't have the same knowledge that you have about the topic and they're not going to walk away with all the information that you give them. So coming back to the purpose you did on, on number one, on the significance, narrow it down and design it so the things that you want to say pop out. So when you design, add images and don't always add the same images as the text you're, you know, if, if, the, if the text says jump, don't just use an image with something jumping. Uh, try to create a, 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 a balance or tension between the two. Then when you added images, remove text. You, that will always be the option to remove text as much as possible, basically. Uh, and then you get to the design part. So if you have an open or free template, you can use PowerPoint design ideas. I think it's a great, great tool and, and Picket is well integrated with that. Uh, if you have a company template, well, then uh, use images even more in order to uh, be able to elaborate on it. And also in the chapters, feel free to, well, this is at least the way I do it, break the, the, the template by doing a full bleed image. That means the image goes all the way out to the sides, both up and down and right and left. And like do a one word, uh, summary of what is the chapter. That is a way for also creating variation in in, um, in the presentation that will keep people from dozing off. And then the last part, rehearse. So read it out loud at least once and clock it. And the purpose of the rehearsal is not just to control the length and to remember what words to say. The main point of the rehearsal is to make you confident about your topic, to feel that you know the topic. Because when you do that, you can improvise. And when you improvise, you give people a sense of uh, self-confident, you know, that they feel that you know the topic and they trust you. And this is very important. So all this together, I mean, if you create significance, that means find a purpose and understand the audience. And you have a sense of the overall storyline and you rehearse, that itself will convey into the audience and they will feel uh, that you know what you're talking about and they will get the story. And then after that, I think, get to the slides and find a way to work with them easily. And I'm gonna leave over to Brad, uh, unless there are any questions right now, to do a little bit of a demo on how Picket works and how you can have a really swift work process um with images and design but you can never shortcut to create a purpose think about the audience and all those steps again that's uh, great thanks a lot rob and uh like i said we'll we'll leave a few minutes for questions so if you do have questions um you can hang on to those or even write them in the chat now uh, what I thought I'd do is try to create a nice looking uh, presentation in about four minutes and prove that this works uh, from scratch. So I'm going to share my screen and um, see if we can do that straight away. So hopefully you can see my uh, presentation now. Can you confirm, yep. Rob? That that yep. yep. So I'm going to pick this uh, theme here, which is one of the the ready-made ones that were given. And this will be my mo last monthly report for the year. So I'll just put monthly report and December 2018. Now I want to add a few slides to this. Um, the first one I think will be about our products. There's a few things been going on there. So I'll just write product update. Um, I also want to present a couple of new staff members. So I'll just put new staff here and add another slide, an empty one this time, because I need to put some stuff to do with our budget and do a quick report for the Q4 budget. And I thought I might wrap up this presentation with um, just a little Merry Christmas and see you in 2019. So uh, I'll write that and Merry Christmas and don't 
forget, oh, I can't spell today, forget to get some rest. There we go. So now I've got five slides. And uh, as you can see, I've got pick it up here in the menu ribbon. So uh, I just click on that and that uh, opens the app right in the task pane here. Now this is um, my pick it company image library with all my company images from my company Biomed. You can see down here and there's lots of collections. There's group collections here where we've sorted different um, collections of images into different categories. But I think everything I need will be in the featured section up here now. I want to make sure that the boss is happy, our CMO, um, so I need to add a logo, otherwise uh, he'll be on my case about uh, not representing the brand properly. And as you can see, uh, design ideas has just kicked in here as well. So I've got Picket here and I've got design ideas here. And design ideas is actually giving me several suggestions uh, for different layouts that I can use. And I like that one, so I'll go with that and move on to products. now. If I go back to um, my image library here, you'll see that somebody else at the company, some kind person has created a, a collection called products. And in here we've got uh, one of our latest um, products, a fancy new syringe. Uh, so I'll stick that on there and just add something there. Write a little text, new products. There we go, and some sales. Um, we've also got a few new uh, employees. So let's go back to our image bank. And again, some kind person at the company's created a, a staff collection. Uh, this is Kim, who's just joined us. So I'll add Kim. Um, I've also got a new colleague called Mike, who uh, needs to be presented to our colleagues. And last but not least, we've got Stephanie here. We've got some shots from a photo shoot we did the other day. And uh, design ideas will give me different suggestions. So I can obviously choose to let Stephanie be the main attraction here, but I want to be a bit more diplomatic. So I'm giving them all the same amount of space here. Uh, so don't ruffle any feathers. There we go. Uh, moving on. Now, the issue here with my company image bank, it, it's great. It's got lots of good product shots, logos, all that sort of stuff. But we don't have a whole lot of images to do with money. So the great thing with Picket is that right next to my company image bank or image library here is the Picket image library, which is full of unlimited images in different collections here. So all of this has been professionally curated, handpicked for PowerPoint by people at Picket. So if I want city images, there's a whole bunch of them there. And if I want uh, something to do with, you know, PowerPoint backgrounds, just sort of plain stuff, I've got that. But I can also search. So I'm just going to write budget here. And uh, there we go, there's some images. This guy looks like he knows a bit about money, so we'll put that in there. And I want to mix it up a bit, so I'll go for something darker so I can put some text on top. And then last but not least, uh, how am I doing? I think I'm about three and a half minutes now, something like that. Uh, I just want to sort of, you know, add a bit of Christmas cheer. It is the season and all that, so I'm uh, looking just for something in this collection that I saw that Pickett had produced. And they, you know, there's a whole bunch of seasonal collections here for Halloween or Easter or whatever it may be. Uh, everybody loves a sleeping baby, right? So let's stick that on there. And that goes well with my message too. Uh, Merry Christmas and don't forget to get some rest. So there you go. In about four minutes, I've created a five slide um, uh, presentation that looks coherent, looks slick, it's got the same sort of color palette and a whole bunch of images that are all free to use. Uh, I saw that some of you uh, source your images from Google and 85% uh, of those uh, are not legal or licensed, whereas everything in the Picket Image Library is uh, completely licensed and legally cleared and, and free to use. So that's how uh, you can create a stunning presentation in just four or five minutes. Um, and obviously there's loads more you can do with it, but there's an example. So um, that's Picket in action. And uh, as I said at the beginning, if you'd like to try Picket, um, we're, we're giving you a 20% discount for the first 12 months if you sign up um, using a, a discount code that I'll type in the chat in a moment. And you can also try it for free first. So, um, so it's uh, you know you can give it give it a test run. But we've got a few minutes left if uh, people have got questions to Rob or to myself. And in the meantime, I'll just write that code in the in the chat. So take it away if you've got any questions.
Okay. It says you are uh, typing. It says I'm typing. Okay. Kathleen's typing too. Who else? Genevieve. For external presentations, you recommend that the company logo appears on every slide. What do you say, Rob? Uh, no, personally, I don't. I mean, it's it depends. Uh, coming back to the format, if you want to have it as a, as a leave behind or a send out, uh, I think there might be an intellectual property concern sometimes uh, where you need to log on every slide. But in the live presentation, I definitely don't think so. Uh, I think you should add it on the intro slide and in the after slide and where it could be making sense. But any of those kind of hard rules, uh, I'm kind of, <laughs> well, I, I come from the creative side, so I'm, I'm, I'm against that because I think it restricts you into telling the story. So if you look at it, in order to convey your purpose and story, does it help you to have the logo on every page? That's basically the question. And then I would say, probably not. Depends on your logo, I guess. Mm. Okay, Genevieve's typing it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Has anyone else got any questions? We've got one or two minutes left. Chris, do you recommend a certain number of slides per minute of the presentation and also any font sizes? Um, again, I think, um, I mean, we used to make uh, PowerPoint presentations with 150 slides sometimes for an hour meeting. And we also done with five slides for one hour. The, the main point is how the feeling is that you convey. How do they uh, perceive it? You know, what's your style of presenting? If your style is like you show one little thing on one slide and then another thing on one slide, but it's not a whole lot of text, then you can basically show a lot of slides. You can switch every 10 seconds because that's part of the style that how you present. But if you want to do a more conventional way, uh, I would say keep it down to maybe 10 or 20. Um, actually, the average number of a PowerPoint in the world is 20 slides and uh, one image on every third slide. That doesn't make, say that it's the right way to do it, but that's the average. Uh, so really, find your style and find a way to f create an atmosphere in the room um, that is the atmosphere that you want to create. And, and then uh, adjust the number of slides according to that. We've got a few more questions here. Uh, feel free to go if you need to because the time's up, but we'll hang around for a few more minutes just to answer some more questions. Um, there's a couple of questions I've answered in the chat there. Uh, we had a question, what's your views on tools like Sway versus PowerPoint? Rob, do you want to comment on that? Um, yeah, again, I think the tool is just a tool, and that's why you need to own the story. But uh, I've used Sway, and <laughs> personally, I've been struggling with it, uh, but maybe that's because I'm too old, um, not getting the hang of it. I think the idea is great, and I think the idea would be great to send it out, and it would adjust to any format, basically mobile, uh, in a in a send out. That's where PowerPoint often falls short. Um, I think that's great. Um, it's not really the tool; it's how, how, what you do with it. I would say um, we work with PowerPoint because it has about 75, 80 percent of. Uh, share of usage in the world. So most users are are, are used to that. And I think the, what's good about them being used to it is that they don't get restricted by the tool and can focus on the story and the purpose. Great. There's a few more questions there that we've answered, hopefully. Um, font sizes, I don't know if you mentioned that, but uh, hmm. we tend to say keep it, keep it Bigger than you'd think. Yeah, give it big. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, it's not a text document. So uh, keep it normally bigger than you expect. Also what, I mean, we have a, we have a ton of tips and tricks that we share, like only like uh, creative ways to use a slide uh, where, for example, a font can also be used as a graphical element when let's say you do two words that are, covering the whole slide. That could be made very nice, um, but always make sure that, you know, if you want to try and cram as much text into one slide as possible, then I guess, uh, actually, I don't know. I have to see it, but I would guess 16 pixels is the minimum, but yeah. uh, I wouldn't recommend go that way. 
Chris is asking what the most common mistake in presentations is, and I'd say one of the most common for sure is too much text. Yeah. A lot of people, they, they have the same text on their script in their hand and on the screen. And obviously, you know, if you want people to read it, send them a Word document. Picket works with Word too, so you can even spice that up and make it look nice. Um, but the whole point of you presenting is that you have something to say uh, with your with your mouth as well, <laughs> rather than putting everything on the screen. So just a few words on the screen, and then support that with um, what you're what you're saying. But I think that, and that was my po point. With you know, I think everyone heard about death by PowerPoint, but like, what exactly does it mean? And I think that is the thing that you normally present something that you worked on. So your knowledge in that area is is a lot more profound than than the audience that you're going to present to. So you know the data, you know the insight and the inf information, but I think people fail to to bring out what's the essence of that knowledge that you have. They don't want the details. They want the summary, the meaning, the context. So people don't walk them through in like setting the scene. Why is this important? And you know, before they present the the data or the information. And I think that is the most common mistakes. Uh, so again, is it you know the font size or or something else? I think that's secondary. Uh, it's more coming back to like how am I being? How can I convey this story to the audience? And Kathleen's asking if you can use the images for blogs. You can use them for blogs, websites, for print, books, whatever you want. And uh, everything's licensed, legally cleared, free to use for anything. So. Yeah. If it's in Picket, it's uh, free to use even for commercial purposes. No need to uh, to mention who who took the photo, where it's come from, or give credit. It's uh, only one restriction. You can't sell them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's the only restriction. Yeah. Okay, so that's an extra five minutes on the end just for questions. If anyone else wants to ask a final question, uh, we can do that. Um, and don't forget to uh, email us. I'll put the email address in there. Uh, I can put that in the chat again in case you don't feel like scrolling up. Um, but uh, yeah, feel free to uh, email us if you'd like to, to know more and um, just send us that discount code and uh, we'll give you, a, give you a, a discount. And thanks to everybody who stayed up late at night to join us from you know Singapore. Yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> That's great. So um, just putting that email address uh, and the code is, there we go. December 2018, right? All right. Good night, everyone. Right, so thanks, everybody. Morning. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Thank you for joining.